Okay, this is a seventh revision video for C1. We're going to start looking at um, useful substances from crude oil. So in the last topic, we looked at crude oil and we talked about alkanes. We're gonna look primarily at alkenes and their uses in this video. So we know that crude oil is basically a mixture of hydrocarbons and to get useful products from that, we can crack it into smaller pieces, okay? In order to do that, we need certain conditions. So we need to heat the hydrocarbon to a very high temperature and vaporize those, piece, those um, molecules coming off. We then need to add in either, pass it over a very hot catalyst, okay, or steam. So either of those two would give suitable conditions for cracking. And as a result, we get smaller, more useful molecules being produced, which can be alkanes or alkenes. Alkenes having a double E, so that has a double bond. So we look at alkenes first. Now the general formula is CNH2N. So for every carbon we have, we have double the amount of hydrogen. So if we look at propene as an example, because you may be required to draw it in your exam. If we have three carbons, one of which has a double bond, carbon can only form four bonds because it has four electrons in its outer shell. So this one only has one bond already. So we can add in, so that, so that one, two, three, four, and we add hydrogen to each of those. Okay, this one has one, two, three, so we can add one more in there to make four. And this carbon has one, two, three, four. So there we've got four carbons there. And if we add up, we've got one, two, three carbons, one, two, three, four, five, six hydrogens, which makes sense because he said for every carbon, we should have two hydrogens. So with three carbons and six hydrogens, that formula is correct, okay? So you might want to practice drawing your alkenes out, but way to remember it, that double bond there, we have a double E in the word. So an alkene has a double bond, okay? You can test for the presence of an alkene, which is a very common exam question, using bromine water. Bromine gets in and reacts with this double bond. Okay, so bromine can bond with this compound. So basically the bromine water is an orangey color. And if it bonds with the hydrocarbon, in this case propene, it will take that orange away and out of solution, so it will turn colourless. If you add bromine water to an alkane, it will stay orangey brown, so you will see no difference. But if you react it with an alkene, it goes from orange to colourless, so a very good test to identify whether it's an alkene or an alkane. Again, a very common exam question. So we can use alkenes to make what we know as polymers or plastics. Okay, and this is just a chain, poly meaning many, so a chain of many units, okay? So alkenes to make polymers. We make them, when I say a chain of many units, we call those units monomers. So mono meaning single. So many small molecules, so single units, can join together to make a polymer. So if we look at the example of ethene, so ethene being an alkene, okay, here we can see the presence of a double bond. The formula, two carbons, four hydrogens, again, C2H4 for every carbon, we have double the amount of hydrogen, okay? So if we have to draw polyethene, what it would look like is we have to use brackets to show it would repeat over and over and over again. So we lose the double bond. So you've got your two carbon joint by a single bond. You add in your hydrogens. So effectively you draw it out, your same there. But because we want to have repeating units, we need sticky bits on the side to add on extra ethene molecules. So that double bond becomes bonds at either end. So we can join to another ethene molecule. And then we do brackets around, just like you would do in maths. Okay, and that can be multiplied by any number of times, depending on how many ethene molecules we have. So that's what polyethene looks like. Okay, we take away the double bond, we add in a single, we add in the hydrogens as shown here and then put the brackets around it, okay? Polymers are really good and the reason we do it is because they have many uses. For example, packaging. So we know we use plastics for packaging. Wound dressing, dental polymers and waterproof coatings are all good uses of polymers to write down in your exam, but there is a negative with these. Many polymers are not biodegradable, which means they do not break down naturally. So we throw them away, they fill at waste um, landfill sites, so we don't recycle. Hence, we've now got a 5p charge for all of our plastic bags to try and stop us using them. However, 
what we can do is add cornstarch to them and that makes them break down more easily. They have designed bags that use cornstarch and are completely biodegradable, okay? So as big advancements being made, be aware, for all the positives of polymers, there is a big negative, which is they are not biodegradable, so they'll accumulate in landfill, okay? Um, other one, the last little bit from the specification that we need to be aware of is that we can use ethene, so an alkene, to make ethanol, so a type of alcohol. And the way we do that is we add water to it, so we hydrate it with steam. If you hydrate yourself, you drink water. So we hydrate ethene with steam, which is water, okay, and that makes ethanol. And we also use a catalyst to do that, to speed up that reaction. But remember, a catalyst does not get involved itself. You also need to be aware that is not the only way to make ethanol. You can also use yeast, which is a microorganism, in fermentation. Okay, so we give the yeast some sugar, a nice warm environment. It produces carbon dioxide in respiration and ethanol as a byproduct. We can use, then use the ethanol to make alcoholic drinks, but we also use yeast to make bread because it respires and produces carbon dioxide gas, which may, helps the bread rise when you're baking bread. Okay, so fermentation you might have heard of in bread making, but also in the manufacture of alcoholic drinks because we can use sugar, the yeast breaks it down and produces ethanol as a byproduct. Okay, so we've looked at how we can crack long chain hydrocarbons from crude oil using this process here and these two conditions. We've looked at the formula of an alkene, how we can identify it, and then what we can use polymers for and how we can make ethene. So all of that covers uh, chapter seven, useful substances from crude oil.